Welcome to International Trade as Explained by the Production Possibilities Model. This is a really nifty little trick economists have come up with. It's a bit of a numbers game, and I've got to tell you, the result is astounding. It's simply this. The world can achieve a higher level of material well-being with free trade. Let's think about this word, material well-being. What does that mean? That means if you have a world where countries don't trade with each other, America makes all its goods and China makes all its goods, the world can produce this much stuff, this little pink circle here. If you allow China and the United States to trade, the world makes this much stuff. See how that pink dot is bigger? The basic idea is this situation, good, we get stuff, isn't as good as this situation where we have more stuff. And this happens because we allow free international trade. That's the conclusion of economists, and they prove it with a very simple concept, a very simple model, and it uses the production possibility ideas. Imagine the United States here, and imagine China here. And this chart is going to be a depiction of their production possibilities, the things that they can make. We're going to simplify a little bit here, and we're going to use these two items, in engineering units and toys. So the world produces engineering and toys. The United States could produce all the engineering and toys for its own country, and China could produce all the engineering toys for its country, and we would end up with a littler circle. How does that work? Well, let's come over here, <coughs> excuse me, and draw the possibilities for the United States given this world. We draw a production possibilities line. The United States could make 100 units of engineering. We'll put that over here. But if they did that, they would end up with zero units of toys because all of their resources <coughs> are being gone, used in engineering. So you put a a line there, and this would be their first level, 100, 0. You could make that as A if you wanted. We'll put a little A there. Now, what if they put all their resources into toys? It looks like they could make 50 toys, but no engineering, which makes sense, right? Because they're putting all their resources into toys. And we end up with a production possibilities line it's supposed to be straight, just like that. That's what the United States could produce. It cannot produce out here. It can only produce somewhere along this line, 100, 0, 60, 20, 40, 30, etc. Now let's look at China. China has a similar uh, situation in that it could put all its resources into engineering and produce 15, we'll put 15 here, and it could produce all of it, use all of its resources for toys and produce 60 over here. So we'll put 60 here. And its production possibilities are limited to this line. So China is this diagram, America is this diagram, and they're, because of the limits of their resources, can only produce up to that line. That's step one in this description. We're going to move on to step two after I show you one more thing here. Let's assume that the United States decides to produce 40 engineering and 30 toys. And let's assume that China decides to produce 9 engineering and 24 toys. What does that mean for the world? It means that the world in general can produce the following things. The US produces 40 engineering and 30 toys and China produces 9 engineering and 24 toys. So we'll put engineering up there and toys here. So the world production of engineering is 49, and the world production of toys is 54. That's how much the world can produce right there. The United States wants about 40 engineering and about 30 toys. China wants about 9 engineering, 24 toys. And this is the final outcome. As a matter of fact, this outcome is the smaller circle. In the second one, we're going to talk about how we make this small circle of production into the big circle of production through trade. See you then.